In this video, we're going to take a look at sequences, including some of the basic terminology and concepts related to them. By a sequence, we simply mean an ordered list of numbers in the form A1, A2, A3, A4, and so on. The letter A here is being used just to represent the various numbers in our sequence, and the subscripts are indicating the placement in the sequence of that particular number. So A sub 1 um, is the number in the first position of the sequence, A sub 2 is the number in the second position of the sequence, and so on. Each of the numbers in our sequence will often be referred to as a term of the sequence. Uh, the terms will be um, described by their position um, in the ordered list. So for example, a sub 1 will be the first term of the sequence because it's the first number in our ordered list. a sub 2 will be our second term because it's our second number in our ordered list. And going down the line, we see that a sub n will be called the nth term because it would denote the nth number in our ordered list of numbers. Since a sequence is an infinite list of numbers, um, it's impossible in all but some few, a few trivial cases to write down all of the terms of our sequence. However, if our sequence is nice enough to allow us to write down a formula for the nth term, a sub n, um, in terms of just the variable n, then we can use curly brace notation, um, as shown here, to denote the sequence in a compact way. To do this, we either put the formula for the nth term a sub n inside two curly braces, as in the first uh, part of the notation here, or if we want to be more specific, on the right-hand side, we can put an n equal to 1 at the bottom and an infinity at the top. And that indicates that our formula for a sub n is going to be evaluated starting at n equal to 1 and increase um, uh, forever. Um, we could, of course, also adapt this notation to start a sequence at some other value of n. For example, we could start a sequence at n equal to 0, or n equal to 2, or even n equal to 17 if we wanted. And we would just have to adjust um, this index of n equal to 1 um, on the lower side of our notation. Let's consider the sequence shown here that starts with the numbers 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and 64. Um, from this, we see that we have the first six terms that are shown. And we can identify uh, those terms. We see a sub 1 will be the first term, which is 2. A sub 2 will be the second term, which is 4. A sub 3 will be the third term, which is 8. A sub 4 will be the fourth term, which is 16. A sub 5 will be the fifth term, which is 32. And A sub 6 will be the sixth term, which is 64. Um, and now if we look at these uh, values, we should see a pattern to these, that these are each going to be powers of 2. In particular, a1 is actually 2 to the first power, a2 is 4, which is 2 to the second power, a3 is 8, which is 2 to the third power, and we see this pattern continues, that a to the fourth will be 2 to the fourth, a to the fifth will be 2 to the fifth, and a to the sixth will be 2 to the sixth. And so by looking at this pattern, we can um, deduce that the nth term, a sub n, will be the number 2 raised to the nth power. And so this will serve as our formula for the general term or the nth term of our sequence. Uh, using curly brace notation, we can then uh, denote this sequence by either um, the formula 2 to the n in curly braces, or if we wanted to be very specific about the values of n, we would start this at n equal to 1, up through infinity. And that way we know that our first term is going to be 2 to the n, where n is 1, which of course is 2. And now once we know the formula for an arbitrary term, like a sub n, then we can determine any terms of our sequence. If, for example, I wanted to know the 17th term, um, this would simply be 2 to the 17th power. Um, and we could, if we wanted to, to see exactly what that was, we could use a calculator or computer to, to compute that. Um, but 2 to the 17th will be the 17th term in this particular sequence. 
In this example, we want to write out the first five terms of the sequence with the general term n over n plus 1. Um, so this notation indicates that the nth term of our sequence will be n divided by n plus 1. And so if we want to find the first five terms of our sequence, we simply will replace n with 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 respectively um, and evaluate this given formula. Um, so when we do this for, a, for n equal 1, we get a1 equals 1 over 1 plus 1, which is 2. So a1 will be 1 half. a2 will be 2 over 2 plus 1, which is 2 thirds. a3 will be 3 over 3 plus 1, which is 3 fourths. a4 will be 4 over 4 plus 1, which is 4 fifths. And a sub 5 will be 5 over 5 plus 1, which is 5 sixths. And so our first five terms of the sequence... Uh, of the sequence are shown here will be one half, two thirds, three fourths, four fifths, and five sixths. And of course, if we wanted to keep going, we could certainly do that by letting n then be six and seven, then eight, and we could produce as many terms as we want of this sequence. In this example, we want to write out the first five terms of the sequence whose general term is given by negative one to the n times n minus 2, all over 2 to the n minus 1 power. Um, important to note here that we actually want to start this sequence with n equal to 3, um, instead of n equal to 1, as in the previous example. And so our first five terms here will actually be a sub 3, a sub 4, a sub 5, a sub 6, and a sub 7. And that's all dictated by the notation here that we will start our indexing at n equal to 3. Um, at this point, uh, the problem is exactly like the previous one. For each term, we're going to take our subscript, substitute it into our formula um, in the braces here, which is our formula for a sub n, um, and, and write down the value that we, that we obtain. So if we do this for a sub 3, um, we will see that we get negative 1 to the third power, uh, which is negative 1, uh, times 3 minus 2, which is 1. So our, our numerator there is negative 1 times 1, which is negative 1. And our denominator is 2 raised to the 3 minus 1, uh, which is 2 squared. And so our denominator is 4. And so we get the number 1, or negative 1 fourth as our, our first term in our sequence. Um, it is considered our first term still because we're starting this sequence at n equal to 3. Um, for the rest of these, we do exactly the same thing. When, a, when n is 4, we get negative 1 to the 4th power, which is 1, multiplied by uh, 4 minus 2, uh, which is 2. So 1 times 2 is 2. And in the denominator, we get 2 raised to the 4 minus 1, which is 2 cubed, or 8. And 2 8 we can simplify as 1 fourth. If we repeat this process for 5, 6, and 7, uh, we will obtain a negative 3 over 16, 1 over 8, and negative 5 over 64. Um, I encourage you to try these on your own to ensure that you get these particular values. Uh, but the process is simply re um, replacing n with the subscript of our term and um, simplifying the, the resulting fraction. We originally defined a sequence to be an ordered list of numbers, and for most um, situations that will be a, a, an appropriate way of thinking of a sequence in order to work with them. However, there are occasions when we need to think of a sequence in a more functional nature. And so here we provide an alternative definition for a sequence. Um, where we say a sequence is a function whose domain is the set of positive integers. Um, when, we, when we do this, uh, when we think of it as a function, uh, maybe call the function f, we're going to define the, the variable n to, to indicate that it's going to be an integer and not a real number where we might use x. And f of n will simply be the nth term of our sequence. That is, f of n will equal a sub n. And so that example that we looked at earlier of the powers of 2, which were 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and 64, if we wanted to represent um, this sequence using this functional notation for sequences, 
instead of saying um, a sub n is equal to 2 to the n, we would define f of n as 2 to the n. And this looks exactly like the kinds of functions that you've seen um, previously in algebra and previously in calculus, um, except for the variable here is n instead of x. Um, we can use this functional notation exactly as you always have. So if we wanted the 17th term, we would want to compute f of 17. And as in any other functional situation, f of 17 is going to be the um, the, what we obtain by replacing the variable with 17 in our formula. And so f of 17 equals 2 to the 17th. Again, whatever number that happens to be. Um, and so f of n is just simply a, a functional way of writing um, our nth term of our sequence. Um, and, and this we will see that um, on occasion, we will be able to use some calculus, uh, particularly rules with limits of functions and things like that, in order to analyze sequences, um, though we'll need to write the sequences in this functional notation in order to make sense of that.